Hello everyone, I have a quick dream that I would like to share with you all. Um, it was kind of a weird uh, dream that I had last night. It was a rapture dream. I believe it was a rapture dream. So let me just go into it and tell you um, around what went on. So in the scene, I was in an apartment. Now, I don't know what apartment I was in, but I know the town that I was in, and it was a town that I grew up in, in California, and it was Richmond, California, right next to Oakland by San Francisco. And um, I was there, and something happened. There was an event that happened, and I don't remember what the event was in the dream, but something happened that sparked the fact that I knew the rapture was coming, that I knew that, that the tribulation was about to start. Um, and I knew that the town that I was in uh, I had to get out of because there was a lot of crime and a lot of killings and murders. And I knew that if it was like this now before the tribulation, that I was going to be devastating um, when tribulation started. So I gathered my children. Now, some reason my wife wasn't in the um, in this dream. I'm not sure why, but she wasn't in the dream. But my mother and children were. So in this event, people were not aware of what was going on. All I know is there was water coming um, into the town. Like it was a, a big storm, kind of like how you would look at a storm, um, look at a storm in on the ocean and how the waves were, you know, getting massive. But people were like watching it. It was kind of like, a, oh, oh, you know, cool. But I knew that it was going to get worse and worse and worse. People were just like watching it, thinking, you know, they can just watch it. But the people that were watching were going to be the ones that destroyed because they weren't going to go to safety. They were thinking that where they were at was going to be safe and they can watch the storm from a distance. But everything was about to consume. Consumed. So I knew that what was coming was about to come, no matter what. It was. It was inevitable. It was just. It, it was coming. So I got my kids and I was driving to the next town, which is an actual town that I lived in as well, uh, Novato, and it was kind of more like a preppy area. Uh, not a lot of crime. And um, it was over the bridge and about 45 minutes away from Richmond. So I knew I had to get there. And when I was driving, I was I remember on a, this little freeway road, I was looking and people were just out looking at the water. And in the natural, that's that's exactly how the the uh, how the town is, that you can see the water while you're driving to Novato. And um, they were looking at, at the water. And I was thinking they have no idea that they're all about to die. They have no idea the destruction that's about to go on. And so I said, okay. So I'm I'm driving and I get across the bridge. And um, when I get across the bridge, I get to safety. And when I enter the town, for some, the, the scene changed. And I was in some kind of boat. Um, but it was like a luxury boat. And I sat down, and in this, I'm not sure if this is significant or not, but they were singing karaoke like they were joy. They were having fun, and they were singing karaoke. And some of the song people were getting up, but it was kind of like a, I, don't, I, it, I laughed because it was kind of like a, like being in Japan and how the J Japanese people like have American karaoke, and you know they're laughing, but they're singing our songs. But you know, you, it's just weird because they're like Asian and they don't speak English, but they're you know singing like Beyonce, and we just but in English, but it was just funny. And so I remember, you know, just noticing like how people were different languages were singing and um, these songs. I, I don't think the songs were very important, but um, I was sitting in front of my children. My children were behind me um, in four seats and my mom had to sit on the other side of the, um, I guess it was a boat, some kind of boat, but it was no windows or anything like that, but it was very nice plush, uh, like couch chairs. And um, she was sitting on the other side and the conductor started, he was a bald guy, it didn't look like Jesus, but maybe an angel or something like that, but he was gathering people's tickets, and I couldn't find my ticket. So I started telling him, hey, say, I, I can't find my ticket, hold on, I can't find my ticket. So I started going through my pockets, and it was taking a while, so he said, well, you know what, I'll go to these other people, and <coughs> and I will get their tickets and check their tickets out first, and then I'll come back to you. So I said, okay. So when he left, I started frantically looking for my ticket everywhere. I remember taking out everything in my pockets and I had so much garbage and so much so much um, like wrapper papers from candy and and different receipts to other stuff and and different tickets to other things like movies and it was 
crazy how many tickets, but I remember I couldn't remember what the ticket looked like, but I remember it said something on it. But so I kept reading every single ticket. So that went off for maybe five minutes and I'm frantically looking and I said, I just, I need this ticket. So the guy came back and said, um, do you have the ticket? And I said, no, sir, but you know, I just bought one. We bought one at the, uh, the counter. Um, and the man said, well, if you don't have the ticket, you can't get on, you, you, you can't ride. And I said, um, but I, I, I need to go with my family. And he said, don't worry, your mother is gonna be with your children. So they'll be protected, they'll be okay. So I said, well, why can't I go? And he said, well, it's, it's uh, three o'clock and, um, and you, need to, you need to get off and wait. And so I said, well, let me just run over there and, and buy another ticket or have him reprint it. He said, no, he doesn't start reprinting the tickets until um, six o'clock and you'll miss this one, but you can get on the six o'clock one. So I said, okay. Um, and he's, you know, I was kind of like, wow, okay, fine. But he said, don't worry they'll be okay and you have work to do so I said okay and then I woke up now that's the whole dream and I, I believe that dream was for the lukewarm believers that have so much crap and distractions in our life that we are missing the ticket we don't even realize we don't have the ticket anymore in our possession and I think that's what we do as believers. We get saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Spirit. And then we get to a point in our life that we place so much stuff in us and around us that we end up losing the very essence of who we are in Christ. And I'm not saying that you can lose your salvation, but you can tarnish that relationship so much that you miss, you miss the rapture, you miss the coming of Christ because we're so distracted. And I think we have to be mindful. The Bible says be watchful and be hopeful um, for his return. And I think as believers, we need to do that and not be so distracted and caught up in worldly possessions and the things that we can obtain in this world. Um, it, 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 it bothered my spirit to think that I would be left behind um, because I don't have a ticket. So today, do a self-evaluation and say, God, am I putting things before you? Do I still have my ticket? Am I still watchful and hopeful of your return? We can't judge anybody by their book, but you can judge yourself by your pages. Um, I pray that something I said opened your eyes and your ears, and maybe someone has some interpretation that they can share with me. Uh, but I know that Christ is coming, whether you believe in the rapture or not, whether you believe in the second coming or not, it does not stop God from coming. Be ready, be watchful. Let those that have an ear, let them hear. Let those that have, have eyes, let them see. Be blessed.